Hi, welcome to this week's GMBN Tech Show. Coming up this week, we have... Well, that auto drop from BMC is finally available. Oh, uh, there's also a new Atherton bike, a 130, I believe. Yep, and there's some downhill tyres from Pirelli and a new helmet from Fox. Uh, so great comments and top mods and all the regular stuff from you, lovely lot. Okay, so it's the end of the EWS season. If you've been watching, we all have here at uh, GMBN Tech. And I thought we'd just celebrate by nerding out on some numbers, because that's what we do here, right? We nerd out. So um, <laughs> here's some nerd numbers for you. Now, the big numbers are 47 teams, 187 riders, 20 nationalities. They did eight rounds, 44 stages, uh, where they did a total of 124 kilometers, descending 19,253 meters. I actually thought it would be more than that. Did you not? I'm sure that's just what they raced. Are you suggesting they're lazy? I've definitely done a six-day stage race that's yeah. 20,000 metres of descended, so yeah. yeah. I mean, it but sounds a lot to me. Actually, they pedalled a lot. Yeah. I probably didn't. Sounds, sounds a lot to me. <laughs> but what we all care about is what they're riding on. Yeah. Um, so I've done some tech numbers myself. Now, it was a bit tough Ooh. to uh, pull out all of them, so bear with me here. Now, the tech from the top 10 overall men's results, Fox versus RockShox. Uh, we've got a divide almost 50-50, really. We've got four on Can't Rock Shocks. Yeah, so four on Rock Shocks and six and were on And what is this Fox. in? Sorry, uh, top 10 overall results for men. Yes. Right. Gotcha. And six of them were on Fox, and three, the top three uh, podium results were all Fox as well. But you know, they're the big guns, so maybe we expect a sort of a 50 50 divide amongst yeah. sponsors. Uh, but I did later do um, a little suspension check for the overall 50, and when I went through that, yeah, they were sponsored, but there was a lot of privateers in of there course, as well. Yeah. Um, and there was 20 on Fox, 17 on RockShox, Ooh. four were on Olin's. I didn't expect to be the higher one out of the unusual. Uh, and then two on Formula, both on the same team, and then two on DVO. No Manitou or Suntour in there. No. But there's no, definitely but there some were... people riding some Suntours, I've seen them. Yeah, so uh, I will admit, if you've done the math in your head already, you'll know that five of them were unknown. Interesting. So they might have been. So if we we're gonna <laughs> if we're gonna be like the cone account in triathlon terms, we can officially say, unofficially, uh, that Fox is the fastest in enduro then for the men. I mean, Ooh, how does that feel, Rock Shocks? Technically, <laughs> or have they just got the bigger paycheck for uh, uh, sponsored well, I don't athletes? know. We're just looking at in, <laughs> in the top 50, there was more people yeah. using it. Yeah. <laughs> but um, <laughs> if we look at, well, basing it on the Kona count, it counts up the bikes as well. So um, looking at the top 10, again, we had two people on canyons, two people on pivots, and everyone else was just on a different bike. And then if we move sure. over to the top 50, overall again it was six people on nuke proof so they had the most bikes in the top 50 overall results yeah with canyon following shortly behind with five of their riders on on canyon bikes four were on common sal or uh, common sal and a santa cruz so four on santa cruz as well and then we get down into the threes so we had three riders on our bayer three on norco specialized orange scott and polygon, polygon yeah and then in the twos, we've got Pivot, so interesting that uh, two of them are on the top 10. Of course, yeah. Uh, and nowhere else. Right at the top, yeah. Yeah, so big guns there with only two bikes. Um, Forbidden. team. Yeah, Forbidden, uh, Ibis, Da Vinci, Giant, Cannondale, Rocky Mountain, and Sun were in there. Which got me really yeah. interested. It started making me think about Sun, and I'll, um, I'm going to throw some love to one of their riders in a minute. Nice. Because uh, yeah, it's obviously got big race history, but we don't really yeah. hear about them much at, I mean, um, anymore. Well, wow. It's funny so, looking back at it, it's no surprise to see with the amount of races that Newport have, got, Newport have gotten them, mm. um, and Canyon, but a little bit surprised there's not a few more of them in some of the other numbers, but I know, it's a I would pretty, pretty good Can mix though. Cannondale with the new Jekyll to have more riders in the top yeah. 50, but yeah. Um, and then the lonely players down at the bottom, we had one Rider on the balls, one on the We Are One, and he actually did really well. I think it was inside Should the top 40. Should change it to 40. I Am One. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Lovely frame, by the way. It is mm. beautiful. And then Fulgar, Lapierre, Acto 5, KHS. Wow. Tell you what, Acto 5, he's got the coolest bike of the lot. Though. I know, and so. I'm going to show you that one <laughs> as well in a minute. Nice. Um, and then Yeti, lol, who was like, obviously, Richie Roode. Lone Ranger. <laughs> 
that is just the only He's person. He's pretty right to be fair, isn't he? Yeah, yeah. So that's that's quite cool. You actually know, see it like that. You know, yeah. you, I think you, there's a lot of coverage of races on certain bikes, but you don't necessarily yes. add them all up. Yeah. Mm, I think we can take this a bit further in future. This is a really cool bit of research. Yeah, yeah. Thanks. I like it. And then because uh, you know we always we we've given love to sort of big numbers here, so I just wanted to pull out two riders that struck me in the top 50 as the sort of uncommon kind of riders. Um, I've got Irene Minju, so check this bike out on screen. This is the sun that we were just talking oh, yeah. about. Um, it's it's in, strange looking actually. It respects. is really unusual. So uh, it's got this sort of shapely frame um, to the can, which is, you know, unusual in itself. We don't see many suns around. And he's rocking formula, which isn't that common. And also run, rocking a coil shock on the rear there as well, mm. which is even less common. And then just to really top it over the, uh, over the edge there, he's running carbon wheels with carbon bladed spokes. So he's on the Mavic D Max Pros. Nice pair of wheels though, to be in, fair. Yeah. Mm. And uh, with that stealth black setup, and he's got this sort of limited edition Sam Hill graphics on it, which is yeah, like a sort day of, day, of day. Yeah, skull kind of fashion. I had a set on them um, proof way back, they were really nice. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, they look really smart on that black setup. And interestingly, he has actually beaten Sam Hill in three of the races and was faster than him overall. So, one to watch, I think, Irene Minju. Yeah. Um, and then another one, because I think you love the Acto 5, oh, so I thought I'd yeah. put this in here for you. Beautiful bike. Uh, this is Wojtek uh, Blaha, probably butchering that name there. Um, but he came 42nd overall on his Acto 5 P train. Check this out. Not only is it high pivot, not only is it short travel 145mm frame, mm. but it is CNC machined from solid blocks of aluminium. And yet it's still so voluptuously curvy, isn't it? And they've yeah. given it an emerald green uh, gloss finish just to match the DVO factory green suspension. So. Beautiful looking frame, that. Definitely one of the coolest frames out there. It's quite quite unique, isn't it? It's a beauty, nice. I think. Yeah. But um, yeah, let us know what you think down in the comments below. Do you like mm. the unusual or do you like the usuals? Would you rather have a nuke proof if you were racing EWS yeah. or would you like something more unusual, like a P train, for example? Let us know down in the comments below. Nice. Okay, so straight into news, and the first thing is actually something Neil filmed for me the other day, or filmed for us. Um, he was up visiting Atherton Bikes, and they showed him the 130mm travel bike that's finally been released. I actually saw that bike in the Mulvans in 2021, just hiding in plain sight. No one even noticed it, but because I was a bit of an Atherton bike geek, I spotted the fact there's a few things that made it stand out as a short travel bike. Uh, over to Neil. All right, I've been up in Wales at Dubby Bike Park filming some riding. I thought, great opportunity to drop into Afton Bikes HQ, take a look around and take a look at their new bike, the 130. Here it is, this is the brand new Afton Bikes 130. It's the third bike in their range, got the downhill bike and the 150. It's the 130 bike, two different versions. You've got the trail version, so it's 130 travel on the rear, 140 fork. You've got two different builds, so different specs on that as well. You've also got the X version, which comes with a 10 mil more travel on the forks, so that's 150 on the front. That slackens it out by about 0 0.6, so that's 64.9 degree head angle. The trail build, like you see here, is about 65 and a half degree head angle. The three D titanium lugs on this bike are actually thinner and lighter weight than the other bikes, but still sort of measured up to the same category. So I'll take category four and category five usage, which is like enduro up to hard bike park riding. There's 22 standard sizes on this bike, ranging from a reach of 410 up to 530 millimeters. And on the bigger bikes, the uh, seat tube angle goes from a 77 up to a 79. So bigger frames, taller riders have a longer seat post, just still keeping those taller riders in a good climbing position. The mechanics have been thought about as well of this bike. So it's got guided internal cable routing, so super easy, just poke your cables in, and they'll pop out in the right spot. UDH, so easy to find a rear derailleur hanger. This bike is printed downstairs. These lugs are 3D printed and the frames are assembled all here in-house. Don't know about you, but that's the one I would have out of all of them. I like <laughs> I a short you travel would. bike. You love short travel. I, I can't help it. It's just no, a, I think uh, more is better. -er. Sorry. Whatever. <laughs> uh, so in the world of Pirelli, they have added two new tires to their collection. They now have a downhill and an enduro tire. So check these out on screen at the moment. Um, we've got the Pirelli Scorpion Race DH and the Scorpion Race EN, which is enduro. 
Um, they basically, they've been collaborating with Fabian Burrell, obviously multiple downhill world champion Fabian Burrell, so he knows a few thing or two, doesn't he? He's got a couple of things up his sleeve, yeah, hasn't he? a yeah. few, yeah. Um, and they're boasting four new tread patterns that they're breaking down into categories. So they've got mixed terrain will be an M, T is for traction, S is for soft terrain, and M will be for mud. Um, and they've got two new casings. They will have the dual wool, which is basically a soft, supple tire for lighter riders, um, and a dual wool plus, which is more supportive, more sidewall protection from punctures and splits, uh, and also, I should imagine, more support for aggressive riders or faster racers. What's really interesting is looking at their Smart Evo DH casing, uh, which has two compound layers. Basically, it's the really supple, soft, grippy outer, and then a second compound layer underneath that, which is a lot firmer, so it should ensure that the teeth stay where they should, and you should have support and impact protection as well. So that's really cool. I like seeing people mucking around with multiple compounds in tires. Um, and the new tires will be available from early 2023, so next year, and they will be starting at uh, 84, 90 uh, euros or 99 pound or 99.9 dollars .9 and maybe 149 australian dollars yeah 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 probably is yeah is sounds, it? sounds about right yeah, yeah unfortunately I, um i'll tell you what like internal conversion well, in my head yeah i know <laughs> it does, doesn't always add up does it it looks a bit weird when you see it like that yeah um so i've been following the pirelli thing from the beginning and i think we were all really excited when pirelli came into mountain biking the first set of tires i had it was just a, bit, a little bit strange the compounds weren't quite there but these look really good I felt the prototypes of these, I think maybe at Sea Otter or somewhere, they felt like chewing gum, the softest uh, ones. I like that. They were really, really soft. Mm. I quite like the way that they have like a name of tire and then you have different versions of it for different conditions. Yeah. It's quite a smart way of doing your line. Well, it's simple, isn't it? You know you want yeah. a mud tire, you know you want an all-terrain or a, you know, a firm. Yeah. It's yep, easier to understand and it's not good have for their marketing point code of view. name. Yeah. <laughs> I do wonder about the word scorpion though, because to me, a mountain biking, that means one thing. The worst crash oh, you can yeah. have. Doesn't mean anything good. And all I can think of his Instagram page as Scorpion Masters. Yeah, or like, um, me and Chris Smith we were crying looking at that the other day. Or John O. Jones and his Scorpion <laughs> King move. <laughs> but but the tires are really great, so don't don't be put off by what I said about them. Um, next up in news, BMC have got the four stroke. So this is their cross country race bike that I'm going to go out on a limb and say this is one of the most advanced and progressive bikes when they first brought it to the market and it had an integrated dropper post which still is the best looking dropper post you can get. Uh, but this is the revised model so it's got slightly refined geometry on there. Uh, so it's aimed uh, between sort of a 50 and a 70 mil stem depending on the size offering out there. Uh, obviously the front centre is longer on the bike, it's got a steeper seat angle, a slacker head angle on there. But the coolest single standout feature, before we go into the rest of the bike, I'm doing this in reverse here, is it's got the auto drop system on it. So we saw this on a team race bike, so a Tito Karun bike had this on there. Uh, so it's essentially operates like a normal dropper post until you choose to charge the secondary chamber. So it's got a chamber at the bottom of the seat tube and you can put 200 PSI in there and that will automatically drop the post. So you push the button and it goes down by itself. So you don't have to sit on it to put it down, which I'm sure to a lot of people, you're like, what's wrong with just sitting down? Mm, in a cross-country race, mm. that, so they're saying, so Tito actually, Tito one says, uh, uh, in an average cross-country race, he drops the seat 100 times, right? And although it's an 80 mil drop, you drop in 100 times when you're running at max heart rate, going as hard as you can, and those guys and girls really do go as hard as they can, anything possible to take strain off your legs has got to be a good thing. Well, who wants to do 100 squats exactly. in the middle of a race? Well, and let's also not forget that if they're charging into a section, sometimes it's gonna, they're going to end up in an area where they haven't got time to put the saddle down. So having that as a feature, I think that is the best dropper post system out there for what it can offer a cross-country racer. I am well excited about it. I'd love to try it. I think mm. it looks really, really cool. Uh, but the frame themselves, uh, so it kind of visually looks pretty similar to what it did before. There's two options, there's regular and there's long travel. Uh, regular is 100mm travel and the long travel version is 120. Uh, so it's got their APS dual link suspension system which has just been refined basically from what it was previously. So they say the anti-squatch tune to lower through the stroke, uh, avoiding kickback basically when you're riding up, I don't know, steep rough stuff while you're pedaling I guess, because um, otherwise you're going to get that kickback there. Um, 
more progressive to handle jumps and a feature seen on more uh, recent cross-country race courses. We're all seeing that they're getting rougher and gnarlier out there. Rear triangle's got an extra brace on the left-hand side. It just had the one on, I think it's on the drive side, might be wrong there, um, for additional stiffness out back. You can fit two water bottles in the main triangle, which was a request from their sort of uh, marathon star racers that needed to just ride for longer, not necessarily the, the XC racers. And you'll fit 2.4 tyres in there as well now. Uh, so the head angle is back to 66 and a half degrees, which I think is a great amount. It's not too slack. That's, I mean, that's aggressive for a cross-country bike, but that's really cool. Seat angle is 75.6, chain stays 429, and then there's four sizes from small to extra large. Uh, reach on those is 437 up to 500. Uh, so really decent sizing on them, but for me, it's all about that dropper post, um, of which you can't actually get on the longer travel one uh, because of the fact that the dropper post, uh, the auto drop post, 80 mil travel is designed for cross country racing. Uh, the long travel mode like this one, you can see on the screen, the LT Limited has got a SRAM access post on there. So you can have a regular conventional style drop. Uh, and that one actually, I think is the nicest <laughs> of the lot of the bikes, but auto drop, wow. Mm, I really want to try that. Oh, Interesting that they're not putting, I understand why they've not put it on the 120, but yeah. so many World Cup racers are going to 120 now. Yeah, I mean, it's not to suggest move. that um, it's not compatible on there, but mm. the ones that they're selling don't have it on there. Um, pricing, by the way, starts at €4,299 for the base model, which doesn't come with auto drop, has a regular post, uh, all the way up to €12,999. Um, so, pretty good range of bikes, but that's a serious race bike, even the base level one. You know, it's a great bike. Always exciting to see new tech on XC. Um, but over in the trail and enduro world, we've got a new helmet, haven't we? We have indeed. We've got it around here somewhere? We have indeed. This is the new Fox I'll just Pro Frame. the base, here we go. <laughs> and very nice it is too. So this is the new Fox Pro Frame. It may look very familiar to you, but there is some updates on the previous Pro Frame. So we've got the BOA closure system at the back here, that's new. Um, you've also got, the, well, the big selling feature here is a new MIPS style. So basically this is called MIPS Integra Split. And as the name suggests, it is completely integrated and it has a kind of almost spherical movement as well. So it's not just um, your sort of, your grippy parts, if you like. What would you call that? The, the frame inside. The frame inside, what, the not, cradle, the, the, crane, the pads? The, hair sque <laughs> the head squeezy bit. It's not just that that moves, it is actually integrated into the frame itself. So um, check out some better close-ups on screen here. I did count the vents earlier, by the way. I think it's got 26. Excellent. I can't remember. Yeah. There's, there's loads. It's basically one giant vent with a bit of helmet around it. <laughs> Like, I've never seen that many yeah, vents so on a full face. You've got the Boa, you've got the improved ventilation, but you've also got the um, visor, which now has a three position uh, lock. Yeah, it was fixed before, wasn't it? It I was think. fixed. That was so annoying. those are the new yeah. things. Um, but just to explain on the MIPS Integra split, it's basically uh, an EPP, so an expanded uh, polypropylene liner um, inside the EPS, the expanded polystyrene shell. And it moves in a way that if you were to crash, it would would take the uh, rotational impact basically. Um, so it's yeah, fully integrated helmet, not just a liner. Uh, it gives you 10 to 15 millimeters of movement from that internal shell itself, and the shell splits in half. So yeah, that's, there's MIPS Integra, in as there. far as I'm yeah. aware. Um, which is a similar form, but the split means that you get more movement out of it. And I believe... Yeah, I'll, there's loads more movement, actually, when um, you move it. Your, I believe they told us that might actually be exclusive to Fox at the moment. I think you're right. Yeah, it's not mm. currently on other helmets. You're going to see it, but they're the first to bring this tech to market. No. But, I mean, when we look at the... I mean, we've looked at spherical MIPS before, and it's yeah. got a similar system, ball and socket. Uh, but this, actually, the way it moves on the inside, the two separate pieces, I mean, that's got to be a good thing for the sort of impacts that racers and riders, mm. uh, well, you, you don't really want to have one of those impacts, do you? But no, exactly. It's got to be good I, extra protection. It's definitely trail enduro, I would say. Yeah. Sort of slower impact, but, you know, more... Do you know what? I, I don't want to say, but like, more right, like rolling down the trail, kind of. I'm still crashes. interested to know, because there's there's... You get your open face riders and racers, you get your full face, and then you get the sort of... I mean, this is classed as a full face helmet, it's not like an intermediate, but I'm only saying intermediate in terms of how much uh, ventilation it has. Uh, what what do you look for in a full face helmet out there? Would you go for the full 
full protection with less ventilation, or would you actually go for them to something like this that you could quite easily pedal in? Mm. Like, to I'm me, all that, about the event. In that appeals me. to me. Like, I don't basically use full face helmets because I find them too restrictive, but I actually really like the idea of this. Yeah, I, I also like my ears not to be covered. Yeah, um, full same. faces make me feel like I'm having a panic attack. Yeah, I, I <laughs> rely I on feeling the wind on my face and hearing yeah. stuff. I'm so tuned in like that. <laughs> I think it's a really cool looking lid. Yeah, and so you've obviously, obviously got your goggle channel as usual, and just so you know, they'll be on sale now at £310 in the UK. Uh, not sure on overseas prices, but will be of a similar um, level, I would say. Oh, I just noticed as well, it's got the old fiddlock. Oh, buckle. the fiddlock, of course, yeah. the magnetic clip. Yeah, these things are the great. They are I so good. Them. Medics love these actually, as well. They're so easy to pop off. I can, un I can do it up just by flicking it sometimes. Very good. <laughs> Okay, it's quiz time for you lovely people and I've gone heavy in on the sun because I feel like people want, need to be reminded of who Sun are. So, Sun were originally BMX manufacturers. They started up in 1982 by a man now synonymous with another successful bike brand. Who was that man? Or at least that new bike brand? I know. <laughs> of course. <laughs> In 1988, Sun dominated the BMX scene and took the World Championship title, but they also released a mountain bike at the very beginning of that new sport, mountain biking, so young. Uh, what was it called? What was the name of that um, model? And bonus point if you know what year it came back for a return. Ooh, that was a sneaky extra question. <laughs> I didn't see you put that one Sneaky extra one, yeah. Oh. And in 1996, Eric Barone, or Barone, uh, broke a speed record aboard a Sun on a snowy French slope. What speed record did he achieve Don't, or break? That, that guy. Crazy. No disrespect, Eric. Yeah, you're a lunatic. Yeah. Oh my God. The stuff he's done on the bike. Just so you know, he still holds the record now. Is he still alive? <laughs> I, don't I don't even mean as a joke. Know, like, genuinely, know. he's had some crashes that are hard <laughs> I to don't watch. Know. Right, that one down the side of the volcano. Oh, poor guy. <laughs> anyway, we'll come back to you in a bit. Later. <laughs> So comments were maintenance rage related, mm. um, which, yeah, I mean, I'm still laughing about this because <laughs> I've been getting messages from mates so like, oh, you forgot about this one, this one, That's there's loads. True. Uh, so Lorenzo says, uh, funny, this is the main topic for GMBN Tech Day when I just finished installing ride wrap on my bike. Uh, the process is not as easy as the how-to video showed it to me. A few times I've raged too. I wanted to rip the wrap to shreds. <laughs> Yep, there's always there. a bubble somewhere, isn't there? I know, and, like, and it's always on the top where you <laughs> see it all the time. Yeah. Uh, so Island Ariel says, um, every job that you think will only take an hour or less turns into a five hour marathon. Yeah, I've been there. Especially if you're in a hurry. <laughs> uh, Jason Fox says, don't get me started about the first time um, I attempted a tubeless setup. Hours of it. Uh, now I can do mm. it quite easily, no downhill casing here. Uh, there's much yelling that first time. Yeah, yeah, I bet. Yeah, that's just the way it goes. Uh, David DeGia says, good to see the other side of the coin of people who seem um, so happy in their DIY videos. I think he's talking about us. Yeah, yeah. Well, you, well, yeah. yeah I mean, Happens. the magic of editing. Also, normal people that really like to f swear as well. Um, but hey. Oh, of course. Uh, Neil Lowe says, uh, for me, it's cutting down a hydraulic hose and dropping the only spare olive you Oh, yeah. Yeah, actually, I did wow. that the other day. Uh, or you stood on one and squashed it. Mm. Yeah. Aww, and, and the only spare Neil. one I had was for a different brake system. If I had loads of spares, and they were all different ones, except the one I needed. Always That's really the way. Annoying. That's the annoying thing for me, is having everything but the one you want. Yeah. Um, Paul Weil says, when I did my first lower leg service, I got everything back together, super proud of myself, then realized I had mounted the lowers back to front. <laughs> wow, that's, well, you've that's got a good one. a homemade that's a, Manitou there. That's a good one. <laughs> Nice. Like it. Uh, Joshua says, I hyperextended my thumb trying, <laughs> sorry, <Aww. laughs> hyperextended my thumb trying to break what had been the stiffest bead ever off the rim. Uh, Watch the main thumb joint and pop out and right back in again. Very painful and I had to face the customer like nothing happened while I was profusely sweating. Aww. I'll tell you what, you're a, as soon you're, as I read hyperextended you're a, you're a thumb, better person I was like, than a for uh, <laughs> carrying on with a customer, I just wouldn't have bothered. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. We've all been there. We've all been there. Oh. Um, and Charlie Nine finally says, I'm an artist and every day that I don't use the first aid kit in my studio <laughs> is a wonder. Yeah, I think I can slightly relate. There's always <laughs> something, isn't there? Yeah, good stuff. Uh, keep the great comments coming. Thank you. 
So it's top mods this week, and I've got a couple of top mods for you, Daddy. Um, I've got this one from Andrew, who's got his Santa Cruz Chameleon. Um, I think it's circa 2011 by the looks of it. Yeah. Um, and he said, well, instead of just replacing it, he's decided to upgrade it. Now, I'm sure we've, nice. we've chatted about doing this before, haven't hmm. we? Upgrading an older frame um, and check it out he hasn't done a, the paint job it was already pretty clean looking but what i found it interesting is it's a 26er chameleon um, and he couldn't find any forks for it because no one's selling new 26ers anymore oh. so he's popped a 27.5 in there he's made a moule 26 yeah he's made a, 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 moule, a mini moule <laughs> that's a 67er yeah so I thought that was super interesting. And then he's decided because there's no internal uh, cable routing, he's gone for a GX axis on there nice. to clean everything up. That. So it kind of looks like, yeah, it's pretty clean already. Hey, he's got one of your favorite cranks on there, the one that needs that special tool. Is it an old hope, is yeah. it? Yeah. <laughs> Lovely crank. I've got a set of those on, a, on my old Intense. Yeah, it looks like he's got wheels, brakes, bars and stem. And what's been, what he's done really cleverly here is he's managed to match the front hope wheel, the 27.5, to his old back one. That's nice, yeah. Yeah, so it Proper does look, power on there. it looks like he's bought them as a pair. Oh, hey, that's a good bit of fun. I like yeah. that. I do like a comedian. Yeah. I think Santa I'm... Cruz nailed that like well early on, didn't they? I don't know anyone who doesn't like that bike, but I haven't yeah. ridden it myself. You, you like the Scout, you like the Chameleon. So oh, it's yeah. just, the Chameleon was the original do it all, more mountain bike biased, I think. At the time when everyone was riding like spooky metalheads and DMR trail stars, that was the first one you're like, oh, you could build it as a single speed, you could build it as a jump bike, <laughs> you could build it as a cross country bike. You kind of. Hence the name. Yeah, yeah, great bike. <laughs> And then next up, what we've got from Anthony uh, in Bedfordshire here in sunny UK. Uh, he's built up a dirt jump bump bike, a airdrop fade. It's 2022 from this year, but he's decided that it needed to be the blingiest dirt jump bike you've ever seen in and your why life. why not? A look at here is he's got Chris King in there, some XTR, yeah. Hope Berg Tech. Uh, he's even got braided um, hose cables there as well. It's just yeah, it's just all of the bling, no holding bolts back, everywhere. even titanium <laughs> bolts and some <laughs> Olins up front. So uh, yeah, Anthony, you're splashing the cash on that. But hey, if dirt jumping's your thing and you've got the wallet for it, why not? I say. Yeah, I like it. I'm just puzzled here what's going on with the brake picture. You've got the front brake here. Yeah. It appears to be a front brake with uh, a Hope lever and then there's a shot of uh, an XTR caliper here. So has he married Hope with uh, XTR? Possibly. Well, that's the new Tech 4s, isn't it? He's got there. Yeah. Um, we can't do a, a dirt and a mineral. Hmm. 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 Don't know what's going on there. Well. Anyway. <laughs> Don't need to break for dirt jumping, nice. do you? Yeah. <laughs> Are you ready for the answers? I'm ready for the answers. Okay, let's give yeah. them to you. Come so. On Original, originally BMX manufacturers, 1982. Sun was started up by who? Max Commercial. Of course, of Commercial Bikes. Legend in downhill, really is. Yeah. There's a guy that is like 100% behind the sport. Yeah. Like, for from sure. the beginning. And then in 1988, Sun dominated BMX, taking world championship titles. Uh, and then this new sport broke out, mountain biking. And they released the Radical. They certainly the Sun did. Radical. Mm, um, lovely bike. And after sort of uh, having a few ups and downs business wise through the 90s, uh, they did bring it back in 2005. Yeah, for your I see, I've forgotten there. about that when mm. it came back. Yeah. That's yeah, good so one. that Put was when there. they finally refreshed themselves and they brought out, they actually brought out the um, the Enduro bike we were talking about a minute ago was yeah. there. That was released in 2005 and then they brought out the Radical as well, so it's so, not back to history. Quick side story here, so the Radical Plus, which I think was 4-inch travel at the time, so one of the coolest things with our whole Sun team was that each bike was built as like a system for the racers. So Cedric had his own bike that was to fit him and the suspension was tuned for him. And it felt completely different. It was different geometry and sizing hmm. to everyone else that was on the team. Hmm. Uh, Fabian Burrell, whoever else. So they built like the whole thing, the system build, I think it was just genius, They're the way they approached it. Bikes. But Fabian Burrell, I spoke to him, I don't know, it's probably a decade ago to be fair now. And he, he says that that bike, the suspension on it still stands up. Wow. Like it's still like mind-blowingly good and anyone that was lucky enough to ride one back then will tell you just how well they stuck to the floor 
Um, a, absolutely legendary bikes. Mm. So, so good. And you're seeing that success now with the Commercial bikes, of course. There's so much history with yeah. Sun. I, I hope we see more of them yeah. again. And um, by the way, if you want to learn more about those bikes and the history of Max Commercial, there's a couple of videos floating around down there that Steve Jones uh, from EMBN made for us. Mm. Because previously, he spent a lifetime as a downhill specialist. Mm. And they're really good videos. Yeah, check out our downhill history. Um, so in 1996, Eric Barone, or Barone, uh, broke the speed record aboard a sun bike on a French snowy slope. What was the record? <laughs> he was the just... first man to exceed 200 kilometers per hour on bike on snow. Um, he actually went on to break that record again. Um, first it was 210 kilometers an hour and he's currently holding it at 222 just... kilometers an hour, which he redone back in 2000. And he still holds that record now. And if you want to see just how gnarly the guy is, type in Eric Barone volcano crash <laughs> and be prepared to be shocked. It's horrific. Yeah, it's, I can't it believe the guy me. walked away from it. Yeah. Well, he didn't. He stretched it away, but... Yes. I, like, hey, really nice guy as well. That's burned into my retinas now. He's probably burned all over his body from that crash. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, and on that bombshell, I think we'll um, yeah. say goodbye. And let us know down in the comments below. Join the debate and give us a big old thumbs up. See you later.